Hi, I'm Rachel Phillips Buck. And I'm Matt Boisbert. Thank you so much for joining us on this quick hit session as we try to figure out how to reinforce community given everything that's happening on our campuses um, with coronavirus. So here's what we're gonna talk about today. We wanted to talk about the language of community, why it's very important that you're controlling that narrative and choosing that language very carefully over the next coming weeks. We wanna talk about student life resources, how you can identify those resources that might be used to, to kind of connect with students who aren't on your campus anymore. Um, we're gonna talk really briefly about the student success funnel, how you can find, connect, and solve um, problems for students. And then lastly, I'm gonna give you an action item for you to complete a relational email to your students to make sure that they hear you saying you're on their side and you want them to be successful. We know that many of you are right in the middle of coronavirus planning. Some of you have already made the decision to extend your spring break and uh, to move your courses to an online environment. While you've had your head down and all of that logistical work, we've been working really hard to create the tools and the best practices that will support you in the coming weeks and months. Um, on Wednesday the 18th, mm -hmm. we'll provide an hour-long webinar specific uh, to these issues and how to create a community in the midst of all the things that are happening right now with COVID-19. Um, but we're coming to you today with some very important action items that just simply cannot wait. First, we wanna caution you that the language that you are choosing today and in the coming days to define and reinforce the value of community is incredibly important. Your value proposition is at stake. When admissions counselors met with parents and students and invited them onto the campus and showed them the value of your campus, a lot of it was talking about the benefits of community, the activities, the academic support, the promise that students on your campus are really seen and are connected to faculty and student life and each other. So now that student academic needs are being met as those move to the online environment, um, you need to continue your student life engagement with those students. Even as they're going to be uh, off your campus, if you don't, it's really going to cut the legs out from under the value proposition of who you are and what you provide. So the other thing is that your retention and financial health is at stake. You no longer have the next eight weeks to be engaging with them personally in, in face to face contact. So um, you don't have all of that time to get them integrated into your community. And that alone can have a significant impact on your retention. And I think it's important to say there's a lot of other things that are gonna impact retention, right? You think about students feeling lost, them being at home, they're not being successful in online courses. There are a lot of other things that we can delve into, but just the fact that you're gonna have eight weeks less to spend with them is fundamentally gonna impact your retention and financial health. Yeah, so your students will feel isolated and alone, and they need to understand that this move to an online environment is not an abandonment of them, that they still have community, that community will show up for them and support them. Absolutely. So a couple of things for you to think about. Student life is gonna find themselves with positions, um, people who have to have students on campus in order for them to do their job. So you think about RDs, you think about athletic coaches, um, tutors, those are people who, if you don't have students on your campus anymore, they find themselves with a lot of time on their hands because they are used to interacting with students. That's a resource that we wanna deploy. So as we're talking about how to pull our students back into community with us, what that means is you have to find people who now have the capacity to be able to make phone calls or have meetings with them, have uh, individual time that you're spending with them. That's gonna be really important. As Matt said, we're gonna talk more about the Student Success Funnel on Wednesday, but just some things for you to be thinking about. Remember that funnel is how do you find students who are most at risk? So in this situation, we're thinking about students who are actually sick, so people who might have the flu. Um, but then also you're thinking about how do we find students who were depending on our mental health services uh, to support them through the coming weeks and now don't have access to that? Or I think about athletes not only are they now disconnected from their team, but also they're losing out on playing time. They're not able to play their sports, uh, depending on what season they're used to playing in. Those are gonna be students that we wanna identify as higher at risk. And then remember, as we move down the funnel, then we're connecting with students. 
it's really important to think about how are you setting up individual meetings with advisors, with financial aid, with people from ResLife? How are we delivering those services to our students so they don't feel alienated and abandoned? And we're gonna talk about some best practices about how you can use tools like Zoom or GoToMeeting to see your students face-to-face -face and make sure they actually feel that connection. And then the last one is thinking about how do we solve problems for our students. We're about to have a host of problems come to the surface for our students because they're going home kind of unexpectedly. Right. So we have students who have kind of uncertain food um, support, students who don't have a place to go home to, students who have financial aid issues, they are used to work study and they're not able to do that anymore. All of those problems are gonna bubble to the top and so we're gonna spend a lot of time talking about how do you make sure that you're solving those problems for uh, students. The last thing that I want to talk about, and I think the most important thing, is that for most of your institutions, your students have received an email about what's happening on your campus, right? So that's like a very logistical email. It's don't come back, or we're going to move to online, or here's how you use Blackboard or Canvas or whatever you're using. It's a super important email but it's transactional. Right. It is giving information that they need in order to do the next step. And what you know is that student life, better than anyone else on your campus, does relational engagement, like you're the experts at it, right? So I would challenge you, your students need to be receiving relational emails from student life. And I would say the three things that they need to hear from you are, number one, hey, I see you. The way to communicate that is to find a touch point relationship. So like who already knows the student? If you don't know who that is, go into Ferris 360 and look at their circle of care and say, hey John, it looks like the student's really connected to you. Can you send this relational email to them? We see you, you're important to us. We wanna make sure that you're addressing these kind of foundational issues for them about being sad, about mourning the loss of their last semester or the semester that they're with you. There's a lot of sadness that they're now being sent to do online courses. So you wanna make sure that you're addressing that. Also, please make sure that you're saying to them, we want you with us. So we're on your team, we're missing you, we're looking forward to August when you come back and we can all be together again. Um, and we plan to stay connected to you and here's the plan. And so being able to give them, like this is the way that you're gonna be connected to these people. And then finally, I think it's so important for them to hear, we're gonna face this together. So you're, we're not sending you off and you have to deal with it yourself. We're gonna face this together. If you need something, here's how you can reach out to us and we wanna provide that kind of student life support like we would do if you were on campus. And also on Wednesday, I'm super excited because we have a really innovative student survey that we want to talk about with you where you're prompting students to kind of reflect through the challenge that they're going through, where you're saying to them, what's gonna be the hardest thing about this for you? Or who are the people that are gonna support you? Or are there things like technology needs or computer, computer needs that we can help you with? So that's gonna be a really exciting thing for us to dive into. I would just say in the short term, thinking about how you're assessing what's going on with your students is gonna be incredibly important. I think important. it's so important for that transformative power of student development to shine in this moment of crisis. Uh, so we're looking forward to our Wednesday. I hope this is helpful. Also wanna say that, as, as I said earlier, we've been working really hard to provide you with some tools that will be helpful through this. So we've already created a form and we've pushed it out on your Ferris 360 site. It's a way for you to gather information about students who may be affected by the coronavirus. Um, it's a way for you to be able to track students who are traveling or coming in from uh, a location that's been under quarantine or if they're self-quarantined. So look for that. We've also created a care area in which that form will be directly routed. And so that's really important for you to hear. Yeah, so you should have gotten an email about that yesterday, but if you have any questions about that, you can contact us at support or you can email me. I'm happy to be a resource for that. We thank you for all of the work that you do. It is transformative and we want to be supportive of that. We hope this is helpful, but also please join us on Wednesday. Thank, thank you, you guys.